I think that we, as a global collective, owe Mr. Gyro Zeppeli a great debt of gratitude for making grills fashionable again. In fact, immediately after finishing Steel Ball Run, I went out and got some of my own, and now every single time I smile, I am actively encouraging you to subscribe to the New World Review for regular JoJo content uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. So just push my teeths and you're in. Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga, and today I'm back to Jojo on a Monday, which may or may not become known as Jojo Mondays, but we are here once more, quite specifically to discuss the ever-brilliant Steel Ball Run, because I'd like to delve into quite possibly my single favourite character within the entire Jojo saga, being Gyro Zeppeli. So from everything I've anecdotally experienced along this Jojo journey, Gyro seems like a pretty popular dude, and I can very much see why, because his presence is absolutely integral in starting the new Jojo universe on a high, and providing providing us with a very different character to initially latch onto. But Gyra also remains consistently captivating throughout the entirety of part seven, even when the whole corpse part business heads into full swing and we somewhat lose sight of the race in favor of stopping Mr. President. But Gyro had me from the get-go in what I would describe as a perfect introduction, in which after a solid breakdown of the world and its premise, we land on this incredibly bold character design that is sure to be initially divisive because you know that's just what personalized golden grills are going to do. But in terms of aesthetics alone, Gyro immediately stands apart from everything we've seen in this world thus far, which portrays itself as something of a standard Western. However, then in struts Gyro with his primarily purple color palette, and it makes you pay attention because there has been such minimal use of color thus far, which you know makes a lot of sense given that purple was a very difficult color to produce back in the ye olde days, meaning that it was only donned by the somewhat wealthy. And to contrast it, you also have some dabs of green and the atomic blonde hair that just result in this solid aesthetic binding. And for this, I suppose I have to give quite a bit of credit to the JoJo's colored adventure team for selecting this palette from the wide variety of options that Araki himself concocted. In addition to this though, it is immediately made clear that Gyro is not someone to be messed around with, which is an essential classic Western cowboy trait. The whole strolling into a new town, getting into trouble with some random ruffian, and then immediately displaying your immense skill. Classic rogue agent sort of stuff there. And I really do enjoy that he went to the trouble of stating that he was not a nice guy, because that immediately lets us know that we are in for a morally ambiguous ride with this gent at the helm, and I was all for that. But at the same time, it's clear that Gyro isn't a complete dick, because following this, when he encounters Johnny, he's actually strangely kind to our Jojo of this part, and even issues him with the challenge that would go on to change his life. So it's our first non-aesthetic indicator that there is a lot more depth to Gyro than his tough guy exterior would lead us to believe. And I mean, of course he does go about this in a rather antagonistic way, but it is immediately obvious that he was treating Johnny very differently than his previous encounter, just with something of a tough love approach. And after this encounter, Johnny has a nice narrator-like monologue where he describes the situation as the summer of 1890. The only thing I could say, there was a beauty that existed on that beach, a beauty within the darkness. I was drawn to something on this beach. Will there be a light cold hope here? And then of course he immediately answers his own question by resolving to ride once more and to follow Gyro into the depths of Steel Ball Run. But Johnny also, in my opinion, very accurately perceives Gyro's existence in this soliloquy moment because he would go on to be a shining ray of beauty in this very cruel and dark world. So despite the aesthetic brightness of an Old West setting, Gyro narratively was kind of like our sole source of light in a gloomy and impossibly long tunnel. And just like Johnny, we needed to stick to him if we wanted to have any hope of coming out of this in a good spot. And of course, every positive feeling towards Gyro in the world is then solidified when we see him pack his teddy with him, go on the race. Which honestly, I can pinpoint as the exact moment that I knew I was going to love everything about Gyro. And this is all just his introduction. But really at this stage, what didn't he have going for him? He had a great design and intriguing combative style, a capability to engage in weird quirky humor, and some sort of vaguely defined moral compass that was going to lead his magnificent charge in this race. And you know, something that I find very interesting to think about in retrospect is the fact that Gyro is one of, if not probably the most morally upstanding individual in this series, which becomes very clear over the course of his multiple flashbacks, where we see him being raised as an executioner and struggling with the age old question of, well, questioning things. There's also something that Johnny said about a third of the way through the series that had always stuck with me, in which he claimed that Gyro didn't have that raw selfish hunger that was necessary to overcome someone like Dio, for example. And to be clear in that context, I believe that Johnny was hitting on the fact that Gyro had been born of nobility 
and had never had to truly struggle to achieve anything, which left him incapable of pushing himself to his true limits. However, at the time, I also took it to mean that unlike almost every other competitor of the Steel Ball Run race, Gyro was not seeking victory for his own sake, which would turn out to be very, very true, as all of his efforts were for the sake of effectively saving the life of one boy back in Napoli. And yes, it is bigger than the life of just one child, because it also acts as a grand statement of Gyro wanting to choose his own path in life, rather than inheriting the strict role of the Zeppeli family. But everything explored in Gyro's past speaks to a much higher moral standard than almost any other primary character of Steel Ball Run, even Johnny, and in fact, especially Johnny. And this definitely is not to say that Gyro is some sort of perfect, upstanding, morally righteous individual, because as we established in his introduction, he certainly isn't, and that is very important as well, because the moments where he does choose to be an absolute prick are what gives him that much desired depth, because it results in the impression that he is a complicated fellow and subscribes purely to his own point of view of the world. And sometimes that's not going to match our personal moral compasses as readers, but it's a very admirable and even enviable trait for a character to have, because I like the sense that for better or worse, Worse, Gyro is unwilling to compromise himself. And sometimes that results in great good, and sometimes it results in you know, not so good. But I think that this is going to bring us to another core feature of the appeal regarding Gyro, which is specifically his relationship with one Johnny Joestar. Because if, like I said, Gyro is the kind of person who is averse to compromising himself, then Johnny would be the exact opposite. Because he does clearly possess that selfish hunger that he claims to be absent in Gyro. And as a result, these two play off each other pretty fantastically, because it's tempting to think about them as a perfect duo, and I guess in many ways, Ways you could make the argument that yeah, they are, but in the end, they're just such different people who each have their fantastic qualities as well as their incredibly detrimental ones. And almost none of those qualities are aligned either. So for example, Johnny's journey through the series starts at a place where he has a supreme lack of belief in himself and his own abilities. Then when that gets meshed up against Gyro, who has a supreme sense of his own abilities, well, the way in which those two opposite personalities interact has the effect of leading to some tremendous growth of Johnny. And that's also true for Gyro as well in some other aspects of character. So these two have something of a symbiotic relationship, managing to impart great benefits onto one another, whilst also using their strengths to make up for the weaknesses of the other. Plus, Araki also takes the time to slow down the pace of Steel Ball Run a lot, and often dwells on some of the more mundane interactions between Gyro and Johnny. The obvious ones being whenever Gyro tries out a new gag on him, or the infamous pizza mozzarella song, which only has the effect of enhancing the likability of both Johnny and Gyro, but in my case, primarily Gyro. Although quite probably one of my favorite aspects regarding Gyro is that this late in the Jojo process, being in part seven and all, he is not a stand user. And I can't even begin to explain just how thrilled I was when I realized that he fought pretty much exclusively using the spin techniques, because over the course of parts three through part six, I was really beginning to get a bit tired of the fact that it seems like you were only actually relevant in the series if you had a stand. So watching Gyro take on enemies without his own stand and actually seeing him defeat stand users was quite an incredible and unique Jojo experience, because it really doesn't happen all that much elsewhere. And even looking as deep into part part eight as we are, that has kind of turned into more of a standard model of power focus. So Gyro is an incredibly unique case in the post Harmon era of Jojo. And I mentioned this in my Steel Ball Run review, but quite possibly the crowning moment of this was his fight against Ringo in the True Man's World section of story, which, you know, featured a stand user of not insignificant power, given that Ringo could rewind time. And I feel like in any previous and probably future part, this would have been impossible to defeat without a stand of one's own. However, in part seven, Gyro is able to very cleverly dissect this ability, as well as Ringo's most likely actions, and then just go on to completely outplay him like it was a chess match. And that sort of stuff is on display quite often with Gyro, because yeah, his spin technique is powerful, but he comes up against a lot of absolutely crazy crap in the form of stands, and it more often than not becomes more of a mental battle than a physical one. And I guess to be fair, Jojo fights in later parts have always been kind of like that, where it comes down to who implements their stand in the most creative and efficient way. But I don't know, it was just refreshing to see a non-stand user step into this world and completely wreck face. It just gives me a whole different level of respect for Gyro than I would give to any stand user. Because this guy is strolling into a world where he simply does not belong and he should be completely outclassed by the various bizarre powers. And that's great because it also makes him something of a permanent underdog in the series. And how can one not love that? But of course, no discussion regarding Gyro would be complete without delving into his final moments of Steel Ball Run. And you know that at this point, I've been involved in this whole Jojo thing for six parts and I knew to expect tragedy at the tail end of a series, but still this hit me pretty damn 
slam hard. Firstly, because his final moments were nothing short of incredible, pushing himself to perform his most impressive technique yet to the ball breaker, which would appear to be Gyro developing something of a stand. But I have also been told the ball breaker is the stand of the steel ball itself. But whatever case, Gyro unlocked and made use of it. Which after all of my praise for him not being a stand user, you'd think that I would be against. But the fact that he used it at the end of his life is the perfect way to implement something like this. And it continues to display his profound potential. You know, even threatening to tear down the dimensional madness of D4C. Basically, it was a glorious last stand by Gyro and the montage of flashbacks from Johnny really solidifies this character and immediately bestows Johnny with Gyro's inherited will, which we would take into the finale of the series. And that kind of is the depressing perfection of a character like Gyro. He is an existence that is almost too good to serve as the main protagonist because he has himself more or less sorted out. And as a result from a narrative standpoint, the only thing left for him to do is to contribute to the growth of another character, in this case being Johnny, which is achieved through one final lesson and then his death, which forever changes and elevates Johnny. And this is what I feared would happen to Gyro from the very beginning, because it's always a more gut-wrenching experience to kill a character like him than it would have been to go the other way around and have Johnny make the sacrifice. Everything I've mentioned in this video thus far made Gyro a supremely likable and admirable character. And according to the rules of tragedy, which Jojo by and large absolutely subscribes to, there was only ever going to be one appropriate finale for this larger than life figure. And so Gyro did just that completing a phenomenal character arc, as well as becoming the commanding presence of part seven. And for the last few remaining chapters, it really did feel like we were missing something very, very important, which is indicative of just how much of this series Gyro carried on his shoulders. Which isn't to say that he was the reason for part seven's brilliance, because it was very much a solid all around experience. However, at the center of all of that is Gyro, who very much acts as the heart and soul of Steel Ball Run. But what do you guys think? Please do let me know in the comments down below. We'll even join my Discord server. And if you're keen for some more JoJo content, then please do check out some of my other videos. We'll even subscribe to the channel for regular JoJo wonder delivered straight to your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the new old review and I'll see you next time.